Hi folks, and welcome to another Friday in June. It's June 18th, 2021, and this is Cord Cutting Weekly, the show where we wrap up the past week in cord cutting and streaming news. And this week, we're going to talk about Disney Plus's new plans for new shows, YouTube TV's new streaming device offers, Apple scaling back its Apple TV Plus trial periods, and more. But first, yes, if you haven't done so already, we'd really appreciate it if you took a moment to click on those like and subscribe buttons down below. Either one would help us out, but clicking on both would be ideal. And maybe consider that notification bell while you're over there as well. Okay, now that we've discussed that, let's discuss some news, starting with YouTube TV and some new device offers. So yes, we're still waiting on YouTube TV and Roku to mend some fences and patch things up, but in the meantime, it looks like the live TV streaming service is offering subscribers other ways to tune in on other streaming devices. We've seen reports that subscribers have been receiving emails from YouTube TV with offers of either a free TiVo Stream 4K or a free Chromecast with Google TV. Regardless of which device is mentioned, the email offers appear to point to an expiration date of June 30th. Those emails also mention how either device would work well with the service's upcoming 4K add-on service, which the company announced earlier this year. Of course, both the TiVo Stream 4K and the Chromecast with Google TV are based on Google's own streaming platforms, Android TV and Google TV respectively, so it's not all that surprising to see the company push its in-house software while it works to sort things out with Roku. In any case, if you're a YouTube TV subscriber, heads up that you might be able to snag a solid streaming device before the June 30th expiration date. And speaking of expiration dates, Apple's current offer for an Apple TV Plus free trial looks like it'll see some big changes soon. At the moment, activating a new device enables you to receive a full year of the company's paid streaming service, but Apple's reportedly reducing that free window down to three months for devices activated on July 1st or later. Now, Apple has offered a full year free trial basically since Apple TV Plus first launched back in November of 2019, and the deal has been extended a couple of times since then as well. But barring some last minute updates, it looks like the free ride will finally drop down to three months soon. Of course, that does mean there's still time to lock in a full year. You just need to pick up an eligible device and activate it before that July 1st deadline. And if you've already taken advantage of the company's free trial, feel free to let your fellow cord cutters and streamers know what you think of the service in the comments section down below. Moving on, it looks like Nvidia's Shield TV line is finally getting the user interface update we've seen elsewhere on other Android TV devices. The update includes a new Discover tab with recommended content grouped together according to genre. Also, the All Apps section is now just the Apps section, and the full screen layout should display more of your apps at one time. And lastly, it looks like this update also includes more space for promotional content in the form of content recommendations displayed in the upper half of the home screen. And I think it's safe to say that specific addition hasn't exactly been met with universal praise on other platforms, and it's likely to share a similar response on the Shield TV as well. In any case, Shield TV users should start seeing the update roll out this week, and be sure to let us know what you think of the changes in the comment section down below. Over on Disney Plus, the service announced it'll start releasing new episodes of original series on Wednesdays instead of Fridays. The move comes after the latest Marvel comic show Loki debuted to strong viewership numbers. Before the show premiered, star Tom Hiddleston took part in the video to announce Loki would arrive on Wednesday, June 9th instead of the previously announced Friday slot. Hiddleston himself proclaimed that Wednesdays are the new Fridays. And now it looks like that'll apply to more shows beyond just Loki. The company also shared updated release dates for several upcoming series, and you can see that list on your screen now. In some cases, like for Turner and Hooch and Monsters at Work, the original Friday premiere date is being pushed back five days to the following Wednesday. In other cases, however, premiere dates are getting moved forward to an earlier date, going from Friday to the previous Wednesday. And you can check out our post link down below in the video description for more details. But for all you Disney Plus subscribers out there, what do you think of the scheduling change? Does a shift to Wednesday premieres affect your viewing plans? You know where to let us know. And while we're on the topic of Disney Plus, some may have been wondering if the streaming service would follow in the footsteps of HBO Max and others by offering a cheaper ad-supported pricing plan. However, when Disney CEO Bob Chapek addressed the question during a Q&A session earlier this week, he seemed to downplay the possibility. Chapek said the company has no plans to offer an ad-supported option at the moment and said they're happy with the options they currently have. Chapek was also asked if we could expect Disney+, Plus, ESPN, and Hulu to be integrated into one combined service in the future. Conversely, there were also questions about whether Disney could break out specific brands like Marvel or National Geographic into their own services. But on both fronts, Chapek said we should not expect any major changes to how things are structured anytime soon. But always in motion is the future, so of course we'll continue to monitor Disney Plus and any big updates that may or may not materialize. 
In the meantime, how would you shake up the service? Would you pay for a standalone Star Wars service or a dedicated Nat Geo option? Let us know in the comment section down below. In HBO Max news, the streaming service recently marked a full year of operation, and we're starting to see some stats on what subscribers chose to watch during the service's initial year. According to Just Watch, Friends topped the list as the most popular show on the streaming service, followed by the likes of Doctor Who, Rick and Morty, Watchmen, and more. And if you're curious about the service's most popular movies, well, that title apparently goes to The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Second place was taken up by Wonder Woman 1984, which debuted on the service the same day it hit theaters, kicking off a trend we've seen on HBO Max throughout the year. Animated classics like Howl's Moving Castle and Spirited Away also popped up on the list of the most watched films on HBO Max. You can check out more of the top hits in our post link down below in the video description. And of course, if you are an HBO Max user, feel free to share your favorites from the past year, including maybe some hidden gems you think more people should check out on the service. Okay, technically this next story goes back to last Friday, but it snuck in after last week's Cord Cutting Weekly and we definitely wanted to mention it. We're talking about Sinclair and reports that the company is exploring a streaming service focused on its Bally Sports Regional Sports Networks, or RSNs. The reports mention a potential $23 monthly asking price in markets where Sinclair owns sports broadcasting rights. And if everything lines up, the company could look to launch the service in 2022 ahead of baseball season. Of course, there are lots of questions and concerns about how such a streaming service would actually work, and we'll definitely keep a close eye on things to see if Sinclair is able to move forward with its plans. But as for you sports fans out there, would a paid streaming service be of interest to you? Make sure you sound off in the comment section down below. And lastly, before we go, just one more reminder that Prime Day is fast approaching. Amazon set aside June 21st and 22nd for its two-day sales event, and you can bet Core Cutters News will be there to track it all. We've already seen some solid pre-prime discounts on streaming hardware, smart TVs, smart home devices, and more, and there will be more to come for sure. So one of the best ways to stay up to date on all things Prime Day is through our Prime Day 2021 hub, which is where you can find all the current and previous stories and deal alerts. The deals officially start at midnight Pacific, 3 a.m. Eastern on June 21st, so keep it tuned to Core Cutters News for all the latest. And so there you go. Those were some of the biggest stories from the past week or so in cord cutting and streaming. And as always, thank you all for tuning in. And hey, in case you missed it earlier this week, be sure to check out our latest hardware review, where we shine a spotlight on Walmart's new budget streaming option, the On FHD Streaming Stick. And once again, if you haven't done so already, please do consider clicking those like and subscribe buttons down below. Those are both great, great ways to support our channel, and we'd certainly appreciate it. And don't forget the other ways you can stay up to date on all things cord cutting and streaming, including over on Twitter and Instagram. Especially as we head into Prime Day next week, those will be great ways to stay on top of all the deals coming in. For now, though, thank you all for tuning in. My name is Philip Palermo, and I hope you all have a safe and wonderful weekend. Take care.